It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Titans and the Buccaneers. And it's all up next. Few better places in the country weather-wise this time of year than this one right here. Tampa, Florida and beautiful Raymond James Stadium. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one as it'll be the Tennessee Titans taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, the vibe, a different one here in Tampa this year. This is year 1AB after Brady. What can they do to help soften the blow? I would say try and lean on the defense a little bit more. I think they'll play a lot better in 2023. We know how exotic they can be with how they get after the quarterback. Make sure they slow people down running the ball as well. Give this offense a chance to grow because they are under new management. But meanwhile, the Titans last year, they were one of those strange statistical anomalies, CD. When you look at their defense, they were the best in football, number one overall against the run, but worst in the league, number 32 against the pass. And part of the reason they were number one against the run, the struggles they had slowing people down through the air so people threw it and threw it and threw it and had great success. And a team that should have been in the playoffs last year somehow managed to miss it. Here's the former Illini kicker, Chase McLaughlin, to get us started. And off we go from Tampa. And he returns this to the 22. So a new face at quarterback for the Titans in 2023. It's the 24-year-old rookie out of Kentucky, Charles, Will Levis. As if this motivated young man needed an extra chip on his shoulder. He certainly got one more when he slipped to the second round of this year's draft. This, after he was discussed, as a possible top five pick. As he likes to tell everyone, I've got a cannon for an arm, and I love to show it off. Levis to throw off play action. Got an open man to the right, that's Wesco. Now we're gonna get a timeout. Here's we've got an injured Buccaneer. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. From the 24 now, here's the second and eight. Levis looking to throw. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. That winds up pushing him back 11 yards on the sack. And that'll bring up third. Just two plays in, and Charles already their first sack defensively. Yeah, how about that? That didn't take long, did it? And they look at third down, and that's another time to try and go and get the quarterback, too. And I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. Levis back to throw. A shot downfield for Burks. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. They are such a talented team at defending the perimeter and taking away throws to the outside. Great confidence, great skill. Now on fourth down, here's Ryan Stonehouse to punt for Tennessee. Back deep for the Bucs is Devin Tompkins. Well, on that punt, we've got a man shaken up. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and ten at about the 32. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Oh, he's going to air it out right away. He's got a man complete. An explosive 38-yard pickup. I guess we got a good idea about what the game plan is for attacking this secondary. No beating around the bush with this curve. His first throw of the game is a deep shot, and it connects. That's a tendency breaker right there because normally 
You built up to the big shot, but not in this case. So the big play has him all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. Now a third round pick a year ago. Here's Rashad White, and he's got it down to the 28. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Mayfield looks to throw. He's got a man. That's caught left sideline. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taken them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up for the first and goal. So three plays already first and goal, and they are wasting little time. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. And it's caught. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point that continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Mayfield, and he pulls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Cade Otten from three yards out, and the Bucs get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Both sides of the football in sync early. You force the three and out, and then you take it down and score points. You know what that tells me? They sold their game plan really well. Head coach said, listen, we're just going to stop them on three and out. We're going to take the ball downfield and score. But he also told them how it was going to happen. They're going to run this. We're going to stop it. Then we're going to take the ball. They won't be able to keep up with us. And they got it done. The extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit when he decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit, they recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short, so that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. Just need a yard here, second and one. Well, they go play action, here's Levis. Going deep for Hopkins. And that's caught inside the 35. A big play that time for the Titans. 47 yards. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process. And really, it's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. First and ten, here's Levis. And it's a Titans touchdown! DeAndre Hopkins, 25 yards for the touchdown. And the Titans are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. When you're a great route runner, it makes you that much better as a receiver because now your quarterback trusts that you're going to be where he expects and he's able to deliver the ball on time.
Nick Folk for the point after. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. For this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air, so now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. Okay if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. But the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what they do, so I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant, keep throwing it around. It's Jeffrey Simmons that time who got in to record the sack. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. Credit the sack there to Harold Landry. I thought there at the end he may have had a chance to release that, but that pocket closed a little too quickly and down he went. Yeah, he was certainly trying to do everything he could to extend the life of the play, probably counting in his head. One, two, and then he ran out of time. A fourth down, here's Jay Camarda on to punt for the Bucks. Kyle Phillips deep for Tennessee. Let's take it inside his own 40. A 46-yard punt, four-yard return. And it'll be Titan football. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. The last time out, they had to march almost the full length of the field for their touchdown. So here, much easier, Charles, with this better starting field position. I love your sarcasm, but I love even more your observation because, look, what they did last time out, now with a shorter field, they should have a lot of confidence that they're going to put more points up on the board. In motion is Phillips. The NFL's active leader in rush yards, Derrick Henry. He'll get this up to the 47 and brought down there. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Levis now on second down. And his throw here is incomplete. On any pass in the middle of the field, anyone who's going after the football is going to be conscious that it's probably going to be contested and often physical. Sometimes that leads to drops. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Now Levis. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 
So the completion there, Charles, looking at this defense, certainly in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allowed a completion there. They don't want to get a string of those going. Let him get his confidence. Let him get into the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game, and all of a sudden, he's feeling like he can do no wrong. You want to really get after his timing a little bit, knock a few balls away, and make things uncomfortable for him because if he feels relaxed, you are in for a tough afternoon. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Henry again on second down. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. I haven't met a defense coordinator yet that thinks second and two is a fun situation to try and defend. Playbook is wide open for an offense partner. Nice job holding to one after that eight-yard pickup on first down. Third down and one. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. He went backwards five yards there on third down to break up fourth. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. And now Nick Folk, his career long, 56 yards. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. Well, a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner, because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series. But what would be even worse now? is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 18. On play action, they'll throw. Eluding the pressure right. They'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. And that's an early scramble that can be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish him as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. Here's Mayfield. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Throwing Mayfield. And he is caught. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll go up the middle with White. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. They suspected it. it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Second down and eight. Let's go. 
Now Mayfield. Left side here, that's complete to Godwin. Two yards on the pickup there. And now third down and six to go. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. On third down, Mayfield. And that is incomplete. I'll tell you what, these last couple of drives, much better from a defensive perspective. They gave up a touchdown on the opening drive, and then after forcing a punt on their last possession, it looks like they're going to hit the football back again. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. This is taken at the 18. They'll call it a punt of 44 yards. The return was for seven. And they will take over first and 10. The Titans offense now, they work their way back onto the field. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here, they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them, but I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Here's Levis. It's complete. This is Derrick Henry. And here he'll get it down to the 7. A big play that time for the Titans. And even 50 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. They'll try and run for it with Henry. He gets this down to the three. Brought the power run out of the bag, but couldn't do a ton with it. Give him four on the carry there at second and goal. You get down in this area of the field, you know you're going to get a heavy dose of number 22. They stopped him for a short game there, but can they do it a couple of more times? Henry will get down close to the goal line, but not in as he'll be marked down at the one. Call it a gain of a couple. The defense stiffening here. It's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Trying to punch it in with Henry. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. He'll give up six yards there on the loss, and it'll bring up fourth down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Here's Nick Folk now on for the field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Folk's kick is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. Well, good start for him in this one here the first quarter, and he's now two for two on field goals. And I know while the offensive coaches are telling their guys, hey, let's leave the kicker out of it unless it's an extra point, this could pay dividends if this game is tight down the stretch. His confidence is going to be sky high if they need him for a big-time kick. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Oh, 
The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. We are in for a good one as we're through one on EA Sports. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football as they're looking at a second down and nine to go. Mayfield's throw complete to Otten. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. A first down there on a pickup of 25. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed, and on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there of finding him in stride for really good yardage. First down, here's White. Taken down at the 47-yard line. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. This is second and eight. Opting to run again here with White. He'll get about four here, down to the 43-yard line. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The offense on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and four. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Here's Jake Camarda now. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them... That's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Meanwhile, Levis is that's taken in by Okonkwo and brought down, but not before reaching the 25. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Levis to throw on first and 10 here. And his throw is incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Levis. Caught left side, Hopkins. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield third catch of this first half for him and this one is a first down and he's turning in a nice performance remember he had the touchdown earlier and this time he's able to beat double coverage to grab it i think that if he weren't worried about a taunting penalty he'd run by the opposing team's bench and say guys two is not going to be enough you better get some more guys trying to cover me he knows how to get open downfield and now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Now a second and ten. Back to throw, it's Levis. Hopkins on the grab over the middle. 
five yards. Now it's third and five. on this play to move the sticks. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Titans first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. Pretty good location there on that throw. It really was, wasn't it? That was likely one where the receiver was either going to catch it or no one. Really good decision, and boy, what a catch and move right there. And a tough spot to get it over the middle. Levis now on first and ten. On the slant, DeAndre Hopkins. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. From the 34-yard line, here's second and two. Henry up the middle. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Brandon, I think you and I were both raised the same way in the game of football. You run to set up the pass, but I think we've discovered in this NFL, a lot of teams pass to set up the run. And that's what they've done throughout this game. They've aired it out, thrown it around the yard. Now they've come back to the running game, and they find a way to be successful with it. DeAndre Hopkins making the catch. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. <laughs> I can't help but chuckle a little bit because at this point, it can't be a surprise to anyone in the building who's going to get the ball. They just keep feeding him over and over, and he just keeps on delivering. Levis to throw it to the end zone, but it's incomplete. On that snap, he's the hero of his defense after the play he just made. A one possession game, and his hit kept it exactly that. So they've been in the red zone three times, and it's yielded just three points. Can they find the end zone here on second and goal? Levis sets up to throw here, and this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Levante David, and the Bucs are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. Definitely not the ideal time to see that mistake, partner, because this is still a one-possession game, and that's at least a field goal that just vanished with that turnover. Now, pressure's on defensively to prevent that pick from turning into points for the other side. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at the 20. They'll start here with a handoff to White. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. We've seen that before. Jeffrey Simmons making a stop behind the line. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. On second down, they'll run with White. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. 
Now a give up the middle. This is White. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times, and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Now a second down throw for Mayfield. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. And this offense on third down today, two for five to this point. This is third and ten. Mayfield to throw it. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. A pair of first downs gives him a first and 10 up at the 44. From the gun, Mayfield. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And now it's second down. Mayfield now. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. Well, this drive, they're a perfect two of two on third down conversions, but they need a full 10 yards here. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. Escaping the pressure right. Down the right sideline. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. It was third and long, so he had to figure that the defense would be coming with extra pressure. Found a way to get away. He couldn't see the imaginary yellow line on the field, but he knew exactly where it was and found his way there for a first down. So a big play as it gets him all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. To throw, Mayfield. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Mayfield, under pressure, and he'll go down back at the 26-yard line. They called the corner blitz, and Roger McCreary, he got in there and earned the sack. These sacks now, they're starting to pile up, Charles, and that front seven defensively, they've had their way with this offensive line. And I think at this stage, we have to start thinking about different play calls. We've got to start helping this quarterback out because the entire game, he's been under siege. I don't care what the down and distance, they've got to get the ball out of his hands a lot quicker. And that drive is going pretty darn well. Three previous times, converted on third down. But on that one, the defense rose up and said, enough of that. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. This a 43-yard attempt. And this one is right through. And that will cut the lead back down to three at 13 to 10. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you get the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach turned his defense. The firemen, go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board.
After the made field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Getting set to go again, DeAndre Hopkins marches back onto the field. Making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. Number of catches, but he's shredding defenses, getting big yardage with each and every one of them. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. A cock roll holds it in left side. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive. Good for 15 and a first down. Well, there wasn't much of a window there, Charles. Had to deal with a couple of defenders, but able to find his big tight end. And, Bartner, we know double coverage is a challenge for any player to try to defeat. But maybe it's a little easier if you're one of those big tight ends because you have a size advantage on just about anyone trying to cover you, and you use your body to create some space. The Pro Bowler DeAndre Hopkins, the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. Levis now off of play action. Rolling to his right. He'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Levis to throw off play action. And that's going to be incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. On fourth down, Ryan Stonehouse on to punt. at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Now Mayfield looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line second and a yard. White running to the left. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, the pressure, the hits, the sacks have been coming at him all game long. I'm frankly surprised that they haven't found a solution yet to create more time for him to throw it or maybe change what they do on offense. And yeah, that's one of the biggest differences in this game and why they're losing right now. Here's Mayfield. And there's a short one taken in by Otten. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. First down Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. 
fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. Ten more there and another first down. And now at this point in the first half, you've got to realize as an offense, you're not going to get it all back in one fell swoop. This is going to be about sustained drives and making sure you finish with points. And that's a good throw there for a first down. Meanwhile, Mayfield's throw taken in by Palmer. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Well, he's a diminutive receiver, Charles. Not a ton of size, but still able to bring that in against double coverage. I think that's a great job by him of understanding angles because you mentioned his size. He's not going to go over the top of someone or body someone out of the way. He's got to make sure he creates enough space for himself by getting people into the wrong spot on defense, moving them with his body, and then showing his numbers to the quarterback to be open. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. And Evans calls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Buccaneers will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. That could be an important swing right there. A touchdown of the final minute of the half to take the lead. And I like the point you just made there. Could be an important swing because now that they have the lead, if they can carry that into the locker room at the half, they'll feel really good about what they accomplished in the first two quarters. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that will make this a four-point game. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Taken at the goal line. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. The Titans going to go back on offense here late in this first half. And with him trailing, there is still enough time to try to string a few plays together, maybe get into field goal range. Levis to throw on first and 10 here. Go to the right here and finding Burks. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Levis looking to throw. Henry's got it out on the left side. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Boy, he ran free there after the catch as that winds up going for 38. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. Levis. Right back to Henry, and Henry's got it again. And he will reach the five-yard line before going out of bounds. 
That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago. Followed it up with another nice one here. And before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. Now Levis. Able to push his way through. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. Levis out of the shotgun now. Touchdown! Traylon Burks as the first half is winding down. And the Titans have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Extra point up and good by Folk. And that gives him a three-point lead. So the drive there, five plays, 80 yards. And it was Traylon Burks capping things off with a touchdown catch. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. So we reach halftime here with the visiting Titans taking the lead into intermission. As we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, it's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Coach, in the first thanks half, as always. Solid outing this by one's the rookie still anyone's quarterback. game as we welcome he's over you back yard for quarter number already, three. He's already as he's looking to possibly put his name in the record book. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. And he will not bring it out. It's a touchback. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. Well, Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half. Close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They throw right away, and that's complete out on the right side. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. White, he'll try the left side. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. 
Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They keep it on the ground, wide again. And strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. 57 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. They run straight ahead here with White. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook with the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. From a couple of yards beyond midfield, here's second and eight. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield fires quickly to White. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that'll leave him with a third and just a yard. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White, and he will not only not get the yard he needed, he goes the wrong direction. Fourth down now after a loss of two. I wonder if they just kind of outguessed themselves a little bit trying to run it on third down. Probably should have gone to the air to try and pick it up. Instead, the punting unit will have to run on the field. Too long for a field goal, too short to punt that in between range, and they'll go for it on fourth down. Mayfield looks to throw. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Bucs try it on fourth down, but come up empty. And as a result, it'll be Titan football on the turnover on downs. Even though they didn't get it, probably the right call. Too long for a field goal and just not a whole lot to gain from a punt there. Yeah, you wouldn't have really netted very much yardage if you punt the ball, right? And the thing about a field goal, and you know this from so much experience, the longer the field goal, the lower it comes out off the kick, right? Which means... It's got a better chance of being blocked. So you're taking a chance either way. I like the fact they went for it. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? You're talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him find some space. The first guy in, he's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's just waiting there and holding on for everyone else to help him out. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. But the great coach has said football is a really simple game. Rush theirs, protect yours. And he's talking about those guys throwing the football. In this situation, the rush one, hitting the quarterback and forcing him into an incompletion. Levis on third down. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Levante David making his presence felt in the backfield. There's a reason it's our linebackers are often captains of a defense. They call the signals. They have the opportunity to affect the game in coverage against the run and, of course, on blitzes. Living in the best of both worlds here. Already has an interception. Now he gets to record a sack, too. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again. A kind of a lucky break on the prior drive, Charles. The turnover on downs that the offense had didn't come back to bite them after the other side, their defense came through, was able to hold them without any points. I would agree with you, partner. A little bit of a lucky break indeed, but you know what they'd say to us, no luck, just pure skill. We rose to the challenge and we didn't permit a score. That's how we roll. Well, I'm kind of curious, Charles, if they might temper their aggressiveness now offensively if they get in that fourth down spot again. Yeah, one would think so, but maybe because they held them, they might go for it again.
After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Throwing, Mayfield. But it's caught, Tompkins. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. This now a third and four. They go play action. Mayfield. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And it's going to be knocked away and incomplete. I may be an analyst, but I'm also a fan. I love it when people take the big shots downfield, but he was under a lot of duress. And I think that forced the incompletion downfield. Didn't have a real good chance to find his target. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. So possession goes over here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. In motion is Phillips. Now they'll fake the jet sweep and run up the middle with Henry. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Here's a second and five. Levis to throw it. Throw out wide is incomplete. Looking for trailing Burks that time. And it's third and five. Defense! 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 Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for him, picking up the first down. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. Henry running right. And he'll be taken down at about the 45. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's a second and seven. On the option right, here's Levis. And this is going to be a Titans first down as good running gets him to about the 44. Well, he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane and he keeps it himself there and worked out well. And how about the moving parts on a play like this? You know you have to practice it over and over because it's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, he committed to it and went. Let's face it, most teams are going to defend the running back much more. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. Devin White defeating the offensive line and getting to the quarterback. Like how they've started the third quarter here. They force a punt on the first drive, and after this sack, it looks like they'll be forcing another one as well. Absolutely. Maybe got their second win coming out of the locker room. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Back to throw. It's Levis. His throw incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no game. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. 
Levis sets up to throw here. And he knocks the ball away and it throws incomplete. After what they faced during this game where they've given up a ton of yards downfield, there has to be a measure of revenge right there for the secondary. They've been shredded throughout the game and finally forced an incompletion. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now. He's been terrific so far. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Second and 10. They stay on the ground with White. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. I think what we just saw there, partner, was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. On third down, Mayfield. And that almost intercepted. Oh, they would have loved to have their first pick of the game right there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield of man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And it's fielded at the 34. A 46-yard punt, eight yards on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Titans now just about ready to take over. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to, how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Here's second and ten. Levis from the gun. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Henry. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. An 11-yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. But well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. A first down carry for Henry. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. From the 38 now, here's second down and one. Running left, it's Henry. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. My high school football coach was very fond of saying, you've got to meet force with force. And on a short yardage running play, that's what you're going to encounter. And how about them picking up the first down on that one? First and 10, here's Levis. He's going to find his receiver, Chris Moore. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. 
Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. On second down, here's Henry. And a nice run. They're going to take this close to the first down marker at the Bucks 27. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. Well, this has been a long drive. In fact, it's eaten up a good chunk of the third quarter, which is precisely what you want when you're playing with the lead. You control the football, you control the clock, and impose your will on the defense. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game. First and ten here. Levis's throw pulled in by Hopkins. So he stopped for no gain, and that'll bring up second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. A second down throw from Levis. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Shaquille Barrett put that sack by his name in the stat sheet. It's been a little bit of feast or famine because he's thrown for decent yardage, and obviously they've got the lead, Charles, but now he's been sacked four times. And what I'm focusing on is his toughness in the pocket because you mentioned the feast or famine part. He's played well in between being dumped on his back, but every time he's had a chance to throw the football, he's been impressive. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Nice caught by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. And now Nick Folk. His career long, 56 yards. This from 54 yards away. And the 38-year-old vet able to split the uprights, and that will double their lead as it's up to six. So it was a three-point lead at halftime, and they doubled that with a field goal here. And I think defensively, you've got to be okay with that because you've kept this game within a touchdown. Your hope is that you've inspired your offense to put a drive together, get in the end zone themselves, and hopefully get you the lead. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he will be taken down here on the return on what will wind up being the final play of this third quarter. Three quarters in the books. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. It's Buccaneer football, but they've got work to do. They find themselves behind here to start the fourth quarter. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. Throwing again, Mayfield on second and ten. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but you know that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for naught. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. Little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. 
Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Now that's a play to applaud because these RPOs, things happen so quickly. And that ball's out of the quarterback's hands fast. He read it and reacted and was there to hit him as the ball arrived at the receiver. Big time read, big time play. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. That'll be a 41-yard punt, four yards there on the return. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Levis now off of play action. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. No sense risking anything there on first down. Even though he's still in the pocket, he had a receiver out to his side, so just put that in a spot where the only people who can make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. Play action now. Levis. That's to the sideline and incomplete. A couple of quick incompletions, and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to cap the throwing lanes? Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Off the play fake, Levis. Oh, a heck of an effort there as he'll make the diving catch. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. Now that's a big pickup right there. And so often we focus on how the quarterback's faking up play action. How about everyone being in on the deal and picking it up? Second, third levels. You can see them trying to recover. They bit. Worked out offensively. Levis now on first and ten. A short throw taken in by Conquo. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. They'll throw it again with Levis. Go to the right here and finding Burks. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Here's third and a few inches. Levis back to throw. And he'll find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Titans first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground, keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. Second down, they go again with Henry. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage, and now third and 11 coming up. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. 
So here's Nick Folk in an important spot. This to make it a two-score game. Folk's kick is good, and that will make this a nine-point lead. So that CD, an important one here in the fourth quarter. And that importance cannot be overstated. All eyes on both sidelines were staring that one down all the way. The significance is that they made it a two-score game. Still lots of time left to go, but likely that was their goal at the start of the drive. Get three points, make it a two-score game, and they were able to get it done. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their 25-yard line. On play action, they'll throw. And this one incomplete, threw it down at the feet of his receiver. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the leg's still there. This has been a tough game. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and 10. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and 10. To throw, Mayfield. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A big play there on the catch and run. 34 yards. And here's a spot where this offense says, we got to start making something happen. We're down two scores. It's the fourth quarter. We've got to start moving with some urgency. And here's a big play that gives them a ray of hope that they can get back in this one. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Now Mayfield. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. The result only four yards there on the play. And it'll be second down. And again, it's Mayfield to Evans on the slant. And Evans will have a Bucks first down as he'll get this down to the 30-yard line. It'll be a gain of six that time as it moves the chains as well. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Mayfield off the play fake. Touchdown, Tampa Bay! Mike Evans, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bucs have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Yeah. 
And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. And they've seen their lead nearly extinguished after that last score. But bottom line, they are still on top with the football. And a touchdown on this drive would really put them in position A. They begin with Henry. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? Just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Back to throw, it's Levis. I know the defensive guys were over there chilling on the sidelines, and all of a sudden, they heard the sudden change call because that fumble puts them right back on the field, and they've got to go out and finish the game now themselves. Absolutely. Nursing that slim lead here in the fourth, a costly turnover. Mayfield now after the fumble recovery. He finds his target. It's Evans. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. Mayfield to throw it. first down as he's brought down at the 16. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. First down, here's Wright. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Aziz al Shair in to make the stop. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Opting to run again here with White. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Two straight runs of five yards, first and ten. I know flashy plays, splashy plays, as people like to call them. That attracts a lot of attention. But let's face it, when you're efficient, that can control a ball game. And I love the game plan they've got going right now. Back-to-back -back five yard gains. Didn't force the ball downfield, picked it up on the ground. Yeah, offensive line, they're getting it done. Turnover is so often the difference in a ball game, and here the turnover leads to the go-ahead touchdown. So repeat after me, partner. You have to take care of the football. In order to protect a lead, you must take care of the football. Ball security. How many times do they have to say it? They've been preaching it since day one of camp, and it came back to bite them right there. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good, and the lead is up to five.
Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Tennessee offense set to go again. Now the bad news for them, they've seen that cushion they once had totally evaporate, and they're working from behind. The good news, they now have the opportunity to regain the lead right back. First and ten, here's Levis. Phillips has it, running the out route. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Here's Levis. Short throw taken in by Conquo. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. And Levis going back to the air. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Vita Vea picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Well, collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number, it's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. Well, the crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. Every penalty so critical at this stage of the game as now they've got it third and long. Levis. He finds his man complete. It's Phillips. Call it a gain of a yard, and that's going to bring up the fourth down. Pardon, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays they are going to gain yardage how would you say it? Consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs. And the goal, end the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. So the completion results there in nine yards, and they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner by the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. They'll go up the middle with White. Trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves them at third and one. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Has to. You said big third down. I'd put the word big in capital letters here. On third down, a run from White. And he is not going anywhere. He will not even get back to the line of scrimmage. 
as the clock will stop at the two-minute warning. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They're looking at a fourth down now as they try to hold on to this lead for dear life. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he's on here to punt it away. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. So Levis and the Titans now down by five. A minute 55 remaining. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and ten. Levis, he'll look to throw it. And his throw here is incomplete. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. They'll try again here. Second and ten. Levis. He's got Henry, and he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. A big play here, crowd on their feet, third and four. Levis to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That gets them the first down, but they've still got to move quickly here. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Here's Levis. He's going to let it fly. And it's knocked away and incomplete. I've got a good friend in football who always talks about predictive history. He's got one of their two touchdowns. You can understand why they tried to find him again. Weren't able to connect, but the thought, that was good. Another try, second and ten now. Throwing now, here's Levis. His throw is going to be incomplete. This defense hasn't had the best showing in this game. And a critical knockdown there. If they can hang on, I guess the end will kind of justify the mean. Certainly, and this, look at it this way. It may not be the quantity of the plays that they've had because those haven't been great. But they get a few more quality ones like that. That could finish things off for them. Levis. And that one too wide and incomplete. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. Here we go. This is fourth down. Desperation time now. Here's Levis. And he is caught. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Well, they did the part they had to do. Quick throw, got the first down. But that doesn't allow them to relax. They still have plenty of work to do. All three timeouts still at their disposal. Here's first and ten now. Meanwhile, Levis' throw is on target to Burks. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 seconds to go in half number two. They'll come up first and ten here. Here's Levis. And his throw is incomplete. 
Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a non-stop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. Back to throw, Levis. And he will slide to a hold at the end of that one. Nice solid game there, partner, but the clock is starting to become his enemy. Absolutely. Every second right now, more and more precious as it ticks. Work to do here with a crowd at fever pitch. Third and nine. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Back to throw. And that one to the right side and incomplete. So this defense, they looked a little shaky to start the drive. The bottom line, they're playing away from finishing it off. They rocked them a little bit on this drive, didn't they? But as you and I both know, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. They have a chance to end it right here. The decision made for them, they've got to go. It's fourth down. Such little time remaining, and this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. And a timeout comes in. The whistles blow with three seconds remaining. Down to one knee goes Mayfield, and that's all she wrote. So time has run out on what will be a Tampa Bay victory. And it took a big fourth quarter to do it, but bottom line, they got the job done. Yeah, it is the bottom line, isn't it? A few anxious moments along the way, though. A few sweaty palms, not just for the team, but for their fans. As you mentioned, down going into the fourth quarter. How about the rally? How about the comeback? Getting it done on both sides of the ball. Holding them when they needed to and finding ways to get points when they had the football. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Bucks are winners here as we say so long from Tampa.